All right, that's eight o'clock by Oslo time, so let's kick this off. Am I coming through loud and clear? Good to see you all. Enshriat, hey, Jace. Darius, Ponopim, awesome. Audio and video, okay, great to hear, right? Let's, uh, okay, so I've got some news. I think this stream I'm gonna kick off with, yeah, news and stuff that I've been working on over the last week, and then we'll get back into our game and carry on because that's just stumbling away forward. You're gonna guide us on that one, so that's fine. Okay, so in the last week, Quickly, uh, Quickly, Quickly, Quickly has released, um, which means Keppel and Nineveh and all of those packages are now up to date and in there with all the latest bug fixes and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to use Keppel, don't clone it locally. Just pull it from Quicklist. Get rid of all your local uh, repos first. And that includes RDG Math and Skidder and all those kind of things. They're all in Quicklist now. So pull them, use them. That's the good news. The bad news is that just before uh, the Quicklist release, a bug got added. Hey, Vid! A bug got added to um, CL OpenGL which is the OpenGL library that everyone uses. And so it looks like we're stuck with that for a while. So you will want to clone uh, the master of CL OpenGL. It's a bummer, but it, how it is for this month. Uh, the, the fix is already in there, so next cycle, um, that'll be out. Talk to Zach as well. There's a tiny possibility it will be forward ported and pushed out, but don't know. So if you're having issues at all, um, it's specifically around texturing. Uh, just clone um, seal open jail. Hey, Steve, good to see you. Um, right, that's the quick list release business out of the way. Yeah, last week, what have I been doing? Um, performance, lots and lots of performance stuff, lots of micro optimize jazz. So basically, I have a small story for you. Um, there's a project called Sketch, which is brilliant. It's like processing for Lisp and um, Vid, actually, in the chat, this is the chap who makes it. And I've been, we've been talking about porting it to Keppel for a while, so we don't have, to, so the OpenGL stuff can be written in Keppel rather than raw OpenGL for obvious reasons. Um, and I moved over and it was dirt slow. And that was really disappointing. Like, uh, I had an example that I was testing with, which was, I, I threw a lot in there and it was doing 90 frames a second on sketch. And it was, um, it was doing about, I think, 18 in Keppel? which was embarrassing to say the least. And so I've been chewing on that for ages and I've made a profiler and I've been through and optimized everything. Um, and I did that for the best, well, for quite a few days. And I got it up to like 36 frames a second. And I was getting really disappointed at that point. And suddenly I just wanted to see what the frame rate was without any graphics being rendered. And I stopped drawing and the frame rate was like 40. And I real and I then I looked. And so I've got these two branches. I've got the master branch on sketch, which is, what sketch was to begin with and I've got my Keppel branch. On the master branch I had profiled in a different place. I'd profiled in a function that gets called three times a frame. So the frame rate was artificially three times higher. It was actually doing 30 frames a second whereas the um, Keppel implementation was doing 36. So it was actually going faster. Now of course those are low frame rate numbers because we were just pounding it and also because I was trying not to do any optimizations in Sketch itself. I didn't want to implement batching because then I'm not comparing like with like. I wanted naive Keppel versus a project that was using GL fairly well. Like it was it was using buffer streaming and a couple of tricks and not unbinding any state ever. It was it was cool. So speed has increased and I want to show you very quickly um, profiling. This will be in next month's release. And uh, Engineer, I like your Game Boy T. It's actually Bimo from Adventure Time. It's awesome. Bimo is the best character in Adventure Time. Um, so yes, that was a really, really fucking stupid mistake by me, which is I wasn't profiling correctly, and so, but it was actually best possible outcome because thinking Keppel was so bad, I was really anal in tons of places on trying to get it fast, and then. It turned out I was profiling wrong and Keppel was already fast enough. So let's take our example from before. So the first thing I'm going to do, the profiler is designed to go to be as fast as possible um, and have very low impact on frame rate once running. It has, it has an overhead that we'll see in a second. So we're going to load up Play With Verts, which is our little game. Um, and 
Yeah, and we're going to get moving on that. So I'm going to restart the Lisp session. If I was on the right computer, let's do that. Wake up mouse, here we go. And slime. And I'm going to load Kettle Perf. And then what I have to do is tell Kettle Perf to load with instrumentation. This is going to recompile all of Keppel with all of the functions. Um, yeah, with profiling hooks in all the functions. You can provide uh, tags as well. Um, right now, this only works with SDL2. Now, um, CommaLisp does have a function for getting the current time, but it's accurate in milliseconds, and we need something more accurate. So I'm using SDL, which has a nanosecond timer, which is much better. Um, many orders, make sure. So we'll just say load with instrumentation, and Keppel's going to recompile, and I'll look at some messages over here. Vid. Perfect time for my connection to break. Uh, no worries, man. It was uh, the same stuff I'd emailed you about. It was just that same story, me being a Muppet, basically. Okay, so Keppel has recompiled, and now we can load whatever project we like. So we are going to go and implement Play with Verts. And so because every function now has um, performance monitoring in it, there is a kind of fixed overhead. You'll lose a percentage of frame rate just from that. But then when you start profiling, there's not a big hit. It still runs fast. And I can go into the implementation if people are interested another time. So play with us and let's start it up. Whoa, too fast, there we go. And at the moment, our frame rate is going to be artificially low. It's going to be at 60 frames a second because we're uh, we're bound by VSync. So we're going to turn that off. And because I can never remember what it is, I've got a function hidden away. This isn't what I recommend doing, but I just can never remember the name of the SDL function. So we're going to set VSync to nil. And then we'll check our frame rate again. So now we're doing about 1,800. So remember that number, somebody, so we can compare it. Because we're going to profile this, and then we're going to make a small change that should help GL. We'll get to that. Okay, so now we're going to start profiling, and the profile logs end up in temp for now. So we're going to say Keppel Perf start profiling, and if you look down in the mini buffer, oh, which isn't showing anything yet. One second, slime enable concurrent hints. There we go. If you look down in the mini buffer, you can see that um, we're going to start profiling, and the size limit in megabyte is 400 megabyte. We're going to collect 400 megabyte of data. And then we're going to analyze it and see what we've got. Wait a second. I'm still massive on the screen. I'm being an idiot. Let's uh, put me down in my corner. Come on. Oh, wait a second. That should have been the thing to do it. Okay, it seems I'm having minor technical difficulties. What's going on here? Okay. Sometimes when I switch over to the Windows machine, the keyboard doesn't work. Now it does. Sweet. And let's make this a little bit smaller because we need all the room we can get because this low resolution. Okay, so we'll start profiling and it will collect 400 meg of data. Let's go. And if we go over here, you can see that number is growing quite rapidly. That's at 200 meg already. Our FPS has dropped to 1,750. So 100 frames a second lost there. Okay, so profiling is done. And you can see over here, we've got a roughly 400 meg file. And now for the slow bit. This Analyzing is only slow, this part, is only slow because I'm an idiot. And I just I just wrote a really dumb version of this. Um, this collects all the data together out of the file. Actually, it's the overview, I think, is slow. Um, and it just brings back a load of hash tables. I won't go into what they contain yet. Overview goes through all of those and pulls out interesting stats. So if I do this, and it'll churn for a second, I'll look at some messages. Hey, somebody from New Zealand. Hey, man. More FPS, indeed. 11 viewers. We are climbing my tiny empire. It's really nice to have the gang get a little bigger. It's cool. Um, entropy add. Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe I'm a little confused. Did I, ah, oh, did I email the wrong person? I'm a Muppet. I'm sorry. Um, oh, no, no, no. We, we talked about the IRC, but I also emailed vid. I'm pretty sure I emailed the right person. Um... The floor is still lava. Yes, yes, that's important. But soon it will be pizza, which isn't. Okay. Um... 
Excellent. So we have some data. And for the sake of things, which will become clear later, I'm going to copy this. And we are going to go and stick it in play with it, log 0.txt. And we're going to look at the numbers. So the data we've got back up here, we have um, the number of times per frame that every function is called. So you can see there aren't many functions being called per frame. We haven't got all the initialization stuff because we waited till this was nice and warm and running um, before doing our profiling, which is good. This is normalized by this function here. Because Keppel doesn't really know how long a frame is in your project, we just say that every time you say step or, or swap rather, that's a frame. So that's going to be our, that's going to be what we normalize to. And then you can see here that um, we're uploading uh, matrix fours 126 times a frame. We are getting whatever the current viewport is 86 times a frame. That seems rather wasteful. We're doing a bunch of things. And so this data will tell us maybe what functions are getting hit the most. That's cool. But then we're going to be interested in how much they cost, because otherwise you don't want to like optimize something that's um, that isn't that's only being called once a frame or once every few frames. So we can see here we've got um, the most expensive one naturally is swap. That's when uh, everything's actually getting flushed up to the screen or flushed into the front buffer at least. Um, some pipeline, this is where we were drawing things. This is the name of our pipeline in our project. Um, you can see oh, all these numbers um, that for the times are in microseconds. So that's millionth of a second. So seven microseconds for the pipeline um, every time it's called. We just, for the average, we just take all the time that we were in that function and divide it by the number of times that function was called, that frequency up here. So we do this for all this, and this would also give us an idea of what we might want to optimize. Um, but the heuristic I ended up using is just one that gives me interesting functions. And this is any function that's called more than one time a frame ordered by how much of the frame it took up. So here you can see that our pipeline uh, was called 42 and a bit times, 42 times with a rounding error. Um, it took 7.87 microseconds on average to, to run and it was called three no and so these two multiplied together give us our 330 microseconds of our frame taken up by that thing so that's the most expensive thing going on um and because i like a pipeline is quite a lot of work i like to know what part is taking the most time so you can see in here this is this is a block um inside a pipeline when you use Keppel um, perf, it also um, checks the performance of all of the pipelines, um, as well as all the things in Keppel. You can also profile your own functions, but I'm not going into that today. So we can see that uniforms are called a lot. And uh, sorry, the uniform block inside the pipeline um, is the most expensive. And then there's the bit that does the actual draw. I, like making the draw faster is probably my problem. Um, making uniforms faster might be your problem. And I'm, we're going to look at that in a second. And so we can just go down here and we start seeing kind of diminishing returns on things to optimize. I mean, we're taking 0.3 of a microsecond, 0.2 of a microsecond. It gets down to, yeah, 0.14. And that's, that's kind of when I stop looking at things because we get into kind of rounding errors with the uh, performance. Like, we get into the error margins there, like it's hard to tell various functions apart below that. And I think that's just costs of uh, the profiling start to be what dominate these times. But these ones are important. So what we're going to do is Keppel's quite fast, but we are going to do something that makes uh, the... Okay, let's rephrase that because I'm mumbling now. Um, there are better ways to use OpenGL. The way we're doing it in our project right now is kind of naive and we're going to make it a little better and we're going to see that that has a performance benefit. Um, Pomodabib, don't you remember that we were doing uh, pizzas last week? Somebody yelled that this is a pizza game now, that we're going to sh have, it's like stuff falling onto a pizza and we're shooting the things we don't want or something. Are you there for that? We're, but we're doing it because that's too dumb an idea not to do. Oh good, you were there for that. Sweet, 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 sweet. I thought too. Okay, right. So let's go look at drawing. So I did a little bit of a tidy up of this project last week. 
Um, it's mostly the same logic, it's just spread out into a few files. So if we go to the play with verts file, you can see that the main loop here, the main step is much tidier than it was before. Um, but we have basically every time we're drawing, doing drawing, we're calling draw thing. So let's jump there quickly. And all this is doing is mapping over our pipeline that we defined. Let's bring up the pipeline here. So this was this was the code we wrote. Here's our pipeline, and here's our um, vertex and fragment shaders, nicely commented. So there's not really much code there. Um, so we map our buffer, our vertex data, over that pipeline with a load of uniforms. Now, the important thing to know is that in OpenGL, once you've set a uniform on a program, it stays. Like, you don't have to set it every time if the data is the same. Now, there's a really cheap thing we can do here, as given that those are cached, is that the camera is going to be the same for all of the scene. So, what if we uploaded all the camera-related uniforms first, and then just did the other ones per object. So we're going to do that quickly, and we're going to see that has an effect. Now let's, um, I've already forgotten what the FPS was. OK, 1,869. Not bad for a dynamic language. OK, we'll leave that there, and we'll come back to that. So let's make a upload uniforms for cam function and it's going to take the camera and we're going to remove the camera from here and we're going to take this pipeline and we're going to do something simple we are not going to pass in a stream this is totally fine so we're not going to draw anything at all um, but we can still set all the uniforms it'll upload them which is pretty cool so the light position is going to be the same for everything so that's fine the camera position is going to be the same. The time actually is going to be the same for drawing all the things. That makes sense. Scale is related to the, th the thing we're drawing. So we'll get rid of that. This is the model to world, which is related to the thing. World to view is made using the camera. And the perspective matrix is the same all the time, actually. We could just set this once at the beginning of the project, but we'll do it once a frame. And then these last two are related to the thing we're drawing. So we'll remove those. Let's compile this and make sure it compiles. It's got two notes saying that this could be faster, but it doesn't know some types. Viewport, resolution, there we go. Now it knows what the types are. And then we'll just remove everything we're doing in the upload part. So let's remove the light, the cam, the now, um, the scale stays, the model to world scale stays. These two go away and we're down to just these. Now, oops, play with this. Oh, lisp. Yep. When I compile this one, this is fine. When I compile this, we're going to get an error saying that we've, we're passing in the wrong number of arguments, which makes sense because we are. So let's go and look at draw thing. There's the camera. Draw thing. Remove the camera. Draw thing. Whoops. Remove the camera and remove the camera. I think that's all of those. And then we just need to call our, before we start drawing any of the things, we need to upload uniforms for camera and we do that let's recompile and say continue and when that actually stabilizes let's go and have a look if it's had any impact at all so we have gone from 1869 frames a second to 2750 frames that's pretty good considering all we've done is move something out right this is where um, it helps to know a little bit out of GL, uh, about GL. Basically, changing state ever is expensive. And so the, le the less you do that, like the better. So what we've done is we've just done less state changes. And that's fine. And Keppel will try and do as much as possible regarding that. If you tell it, hey, bind this texture, and then you say bind that texture again, it won't. It, because it knows it's already bound. And all this stuff is managed inside the context object inside Keppel. Um, I'll go into that in another video. I, th I think I say that every week. I'll go into the context later, but it's actually getting there now. So also someone asked one time in the other streams, was there anything that I was worried might fundamentally change the design of Keppel? 
And the answer to that was maybe the context. And now I'm 100% sure we can make that really fast. So I have no worries at all. Basically, Keppel's, Keppel's going to be fine. It's only getting faster from here on in. And I've got loads more to do. It's, it's really cool. So we are going faster. Let's do the performance stuff again. And this is still running slow because of all the performance uh, for the profiling. So we'll leave this. It can go do its 400 meg of stuff. I'll have a bit of coffee. Run the overview again. Oh, man, embarrassing, but eh. I'll fix that soon. That's a 30 minute job. Okay, so now before the uniform, this bit was the most expensive part. Right? It was taking three nanoseconds of time, so a total 166 nanoseconds per frame. Now it's 94 nanoseconds a frame. And that is that is just the CPU execution time and the uh, full, like the carry on effect of that is because less GL state changes when we come to the draw, things are faster. Anyway, so yeah, our um, pipeline has gone down from 330 to 246 nanoseconds. That's really good. You'll see that uh, where we had uniform four was one of the most called functions. It's now called 44 times a frame instead of 126. That's great. Um, <laughs> slurp, indeed. You will be getting all the sound effects. Um, and yeah, there's um, there's a bunch of stuff here. And there, like I say, there's still more to to add. There's still more in Keppel to tune, and there's more to add to Keppel to make things fast, to minimize state changes. Um, if any of like those familiar with OpenGL will know about ASDO, the approaching zero driver overhead. For those that don't, it's a bunch of techniques for minimizing state changes. Um, and I will do more streams on those as I add those features. But basically, it' gonna get fast. So cool, we've got um, we've made things faster with simple changes. Yay, performance! That wasn't the only thing I worked on. That was what I worked on up till about yesterday morning. Uh, in the afternoon, I had instance arrays, which are really cool. So um, I'll, I won't run any example code for that because I don't trust myself. Uh, but I will show you, maybe I will. Yeah, actually, um, we've got to unload Keppel um, profiling anyway. So let's save this. Let's, was there anything that we, no, that's fine. Let's do this. Reload slime. And this is one of the janky things about the profiler that I made is that um, because it recompiles Keppel uh, with all this profiling stuff, you then have to compile Keppel, Keppel normally. ASDF, because no source code changed inside Keppel, um, ASDF doesn't know that it needs to be recompiled, so you have to do load system force. It's one of those trade-offs to get the um, profiler as fast as I wanted it to be. Yeah, it was just, it was necessary. There might be a cleaner way of doing it. I'll see. Um, okay. Let's see. Actually, no, the, the visuals aren't very impressive, so I'll just show you the code. Uh, the works, couple examples. Oops, couple examples, examples. And then there should be an instance. Array triangles, yeah. Okay, so there is a feature in um, OpenGL called instancing. And it's one of those times if you have, say you have one meteorite and you're in, you're doing a space sim and you want to render 10,000 meteorites. Rather than doing 10,000 draw calls, 10,000 of those map G over a pipeline, you can just say with instances and give it a number and then do the map G and then there will be one draw call but on the GPU, it'll be the equivalent of doing of making a thousand draw calls. It will draw a thousand times your object. But your vertex data is going to be the same, and all your uniforms are going to be the same. So how do you position everything? How do you take all of those meteorites and put them in the right place in space? This means you're going to need per instance data. And this is what this uh, instance arrays thing is for. So what we do is we make an array with our vertices. In this case, I was doing triangles. So here are all the vertices for a triangle. And then I make a GPU array of positions, of vector threes, and I make a hundred uh, positions, one for each instance. And then when we make the stream, the only thing we have to do, like normally we would make a stream like this. 
we would just say, hey, we want um, to make a buffer stream with these GPU arrays and it will just work. Now what we do is we do cons the GPU array with how many, like, so the, the normal case would be every time the vertex shader is called, a new value is pulled out of this stream. And it will do for this, but this one says only pull a new value from this one every one instance. And this means only pull a value from there every two instances. So you can do data per instance, data per two instances, things like that. So this is the only thing you need to change in your code. And then in your, um, in your shader up here, you can see this offset is the um, data coming from that per instance thing. And that's it. This is quite an advanced feature in bar. I, I, I think it's one of those really cool features in GL and all we have to do is cons and then everything just works. So that's a new feature. Um, we will be playing with that when we start um, when we start using instancing. And then this afternoon I added stencil buffers, but I haven't actually tested that yet. So I'm not going to try and do anything with stencil buffers. I'm not comfortable with them yet. Right, that's my last week. So I have talked for half an hour. Let's get into our actual project. And, uh, right, so let's QL, play with it. Any questions, by the way, before I go roaring on, you can just shout them in the chat and I'll, um, I'll yell replies. Half an hour already, I know, I know, I talked so much. I didn't breathe. Right, okay, so I think the first thing we'll do, well, 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 we'll get it running because it's just nice to have something in the background here. And we'll have to fix the uh, time step stuff at some point because that is really stupid, but it works. So we are going to go through this project and just look, seeing as I've tidied it, it's worth we just get familiar where stuff is. And it's been a week since I really looked at it. So. We've got the uh, the package file, which is fairly normal Lisp stuff. So there's not much to see in there. I don't think we export anything. This is just the stuff we rely on, the namespaces or packages we pull in. Then we've got a utils uh, file. We always end up with some utilities. Um, and the function here is just the one that gets us some value that increases with time. Render, we've already seen. This was the one that um, had our vertex and fragment stages in. For people who are new to the stream, uh, defun is how you normally define a function in Lisp. If you stick G afterwards, we're defining a GPU function. Um, and then pipeline is how we make pipelines, um, like GL pipelines in, in Lisp. We just compose together these GPU functions, and this is just the name of the GPU function and its signature. Simple stuff. So that's where we got to there. And then we have assets. Oh, I did add this. This was to make things a little simpler. So um, what I've done is I've made a hash table called meshes, and it's indexed by, what is it indexed by? Du -du 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 -du. Meshes key, okay. Yes, so we have a function called box and sphere and these make um, the GPU streams for this, the vertex data basically. And then we shove it in this meshes um, dictionary and we use something as the key. So for spheres we use the radius as a key, for box we use the um, width and the height and the depth just as a list. And that means that if it's already in the hash table we can just return that rather than allocating a bunch of new data on the GPU. It's hacky, but it works. So now we can say box or sphere of given size and we get the vertex data. And again, something simpler for samplers. Um, when, if you call text with a path, it'll load in using um, the dirt library, which we've seen before. It will load an image to a texture. It will sample that, which will give us a sampler object and it will store it in samplers. And then that's the same. So. We're not getting um, GPU memorization. That was all your uniform stuff, man. It's awesome. And yeah, this laziness as well. So that's uh, that makes a little, a few things tidier later. Entities, I, there's, it's really hard to name these damn things. Entities is a generic enough name. I actually like things. 
But um, here we can see the classes that we defined before. Hey, that can't be the right order. Have I forgotten something? Oh yeah, I skipped one thing. Here we go, thing. Um, here's our thing class, which is basically anything drawable. We could call it drawable. I like thing. Um, you, you saw it here first, folks. No. <laughs> We really didn't. We stole it here. Millionth. I don't know how many people have nicked this idea already, but it's great. So, uh, we have the thing. We have the get model to world space function, which takes a thing and gives you that matrix, which just looks up the position and rotation from here. We've got... Um, oh, yeah, this is where we actually draw stuff. Here's our two functions that we use for drawing now. The one that pushes all the data for the camera and surrounding stuff. This is a bad name because it's camera and time and light position. Meh. Um, and yes, then we have the, the function that actually draws each of these objects. That's thing. Entities are the different subclasses of thing. So we have a bullet. We should actually start up. I need to show bullets again. We'll get to there in a minute. And this is the logic for updating a bullet. Every frame, every bullet is going to get updated before it's drawn. Here is the logic for the falling things. Um, make a falling thing. <laughs> Calls make instance of thing. Oh, that's wrong. Falling thing. Oh well. There's no, there's no extra data in here anyway. It's just a, it would have been nice. We might restart for that. We'll see. Um, no, we won't. I know what we'll do. We'll get to that later. And the logic for updating a falling thing, which makes it fall. Which is just, you know... Decrement the Y position um, until it's below something and then set it back to 40 again. So if it's less, less than minus 2, which is below the floor, pops it back at 40 and it carries on falling. And um, we also check if the distance from a sphere to one of the bullets is less than 1.2, then we remove the thing from the list of things. Gone. That's done. And the garbage collector cleans up the Lisp object. And because all the... GL data, which we have to manually manage, is in that hash table. It's easy to clean up later. Update player. Again, it's the player logic. This is where we um, check the gamepad. I'll have to make sure we have the gamepad today. Uh, is it plugged in? Yes. Cool. And we should start it. Yeah. We'll have to in go initialize it in a minute, but that'll be fine. And again, there's the floor. We make the floor, and there's a light, which I didn't have any other place to put it, so I just shoved it there. Um, and what's next? Uh, play with it. Oh, what's the ASD? There we go. We have the camera file. Again, this is just a little bit of logic for, uh, because we made a, um, a look cam last week, so we could do this. And... Uh, and then we get it in a weird position and we can't play anymore. Dude, that's probably better. Yeah, but we'll fuck with that soon. So yeah, that's the logic for updating the camera. And that's the thing to get the world to view space matrix. Same old from last week. Nothing changed there. And finally, we're back at the actual logic for the game. So we have our main loop. We just use the, um, the helper macro from Nineveh, which gives us a main loop. Um, and everything inside the body is run every frame. This is called on start, which is the init function, and all it does is it goes through here, and if there aren't things already, allocate a bunch of falling things, make a player, and make the more. And that's it. And then every frame, this is called, and we're in kind of familiar territory. Update the, um, the FPS information, update the camera, update the position of the light. Um, Oh yeah, resize the uh, viewport to be the same as the as the window we're rendering into. Clear everything, um, upload the uniforms, draw the floor, update and draw the things, update and draw the bullets, ah, update and draw the player, swap, and some stuff for the event system. I'm talking of the event system, I'm just gonna get... Ah, what was it for uh, starting up all the keyboard stuff again? Um, I can't remember. Uh, 
SDL to game controller DB and say load all the load the database. That will give us everything we need there. Then we go to careful.sdl2, I think. Yes, and really, there's no completion for. That seems strange. Oh no, um, kevl.skitter.sdl2. Is it that one, or is it? Ah, I can't remember, gamepad. Um, there was something to start up gamepads, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, and it was a... Uh, why can I not remember? This is what happens when you don't prepare for a stream. Uh, this the works. Get a um, couple dots. Get a two. Uh, package dot two. Come on, what did I have? I've got something useful in here somewhere. Sorry, folks. Just a couple of minutes now. Remember what's going on again. That's really odd. Hmm. <laughs> okay, anyway, we're going to need a gamepad. So let's uh, load that. And there is a function to load this from SDL. Edge of the seat stuff. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'll clone and graphic video. No, it was just, um... I just... Swore I knew this. <laughs> uh, okay. Skitter.sdl2. Um, oh yeah, there we go. Enable background joystick events. That was one of the things that we needed to do. Um, and then we needed to ask SDL2 for a... Oh yeah, this is... I remember now. Learn your tools rather than making stuff one day, maybe. SDL2, enable, oh, what is it? Skitter.sdl2. Um, just love it when this happens. There is a function for this, goddammit. Game controller, open, that was it, bloody thing. Device index, one. There are one joysticks available, that's very true, it will be game controller zero. Finally, right, there we are, now we're moving. Now we're thinking of portals, right, so. Jesus, that was tense for a second. Okay. I feel more annoyed, annoying than anything. Dude, you're not. Not at all. Not at all. Backseat, nothing, man. It's just, I, I I, didn't even know what to start grepping for. And I didn't know what project to start grepping in. So it was like, I don't know what to clone. Um, so, right. We're back in business. We have our thing running. We have the controllers working. So now we need to make some changes. So, somebody last week started talking about making this into some kind of pizza shooter. So this is on you now. This is your fault. What are we doing next? I guess we need to... We, we're going to need different items that are falling. I guess if we're making this into a game. And some that we want to shoot and some that we don't want to shoot. Um, yeah, so Darius, uh, not enough context. Last week, right at the end, um, we were making this little toy to play around with input events. And then someone said that this was... It started looking like a pizza. And then we started joking about making a pizza-based shooter. So we're going to have a load of uh, <laughs> a load of things falling down. And um, and then we'll shoot the things you don't want to be on the pizza. That's the rough idea so far for this game. Um, <laughs> so if you guys still want to do that, we can do that. If not, then tell me now. But um, we are going to need... If we are going to do this, we're going to need some textures for the pizza base. We're going to need some um, textures for the falling things. And then we're going to have to decide which things are going to be good and which things are going to be bad. So we can start making a score. 
and then another week we'll do text rendering. Also, if you get some sound effects together, because I'm putting all of this on, the resource gathering is your th problem, because I will be coding this. Um... Oh, the chat rules are just really there for me, like as a kind of an insurance. If someone starts being a dick, I can say, hey, don't be a dick, and it's in the rules. Um... Being a backseat driver, being like for code, like it, you get, sometimes you can find people come onto coding streams and nitpick everything, right? And so that's really just a, if one of those turns up, I can say, hey, not in this, not in this dream, go somewhere else. Yeah. All right. So, it's on you folks now. This is a, this is live. I'm gonna sit here and wait for you to decide. So we're gonna. I I think it'd be quite cool to actually just try and make this little game. So um, we will need some textures. So I think a good kind of tomato sauce base texture. I can change this to a cylinder for now, so we can have a round piece of base. And in lieu of, we'll need a bread texture as well. Um, so we can make a crust. And for the crust, all I think I'm going to do, rather than make a torus or anything like that, I think I'm just going to put a load of overlapping spheres all the way around the outside. So what I'll start doing is making the pizza base. And you folks, chat amongst yourselves. Uh, yeah, like you're going to have to decide together who's searching for what. Try and find textures that are open. Or someone, if they want to sketch up some textures themselves, that's great. But basically, I want this to be open source, so you guys can use it. So don't steal anything for uh... <laughs> gluten-free texture mapping. Yes, why not? <laughs> no, we're having meat on our pizza. I'm not making this some vegan shooter. I, I hope we're not making this a vegan shooter. Please don't let's make it a vegan shooter. Unless we're shooting vegans. Right. That's not very nice. Right, let's... Um... Let's start making a pizza base. So we're gonna do it really inefficiently because we've got plenty of frames a second to spare. Oh yeah, what is it? Like, what is the frames a second when we're not instrumenting? Oh yeah, it's it's that. Let's do this. Oh yeah, six thousand frames a second. Okay, so that um th that profiling code does have quite a hit. <laughs> right. How am I gonna do a pizza? Um, yeah, let's... Pizza! Dev glass. Pizza. It's a thing. It's that. Oh, one thing I am going to do, which might work and it might completely fuck up. Let's uh, play with verts.lisp. I'm going to recreate all the things. Because at the moment, they're all that, and I want them to be falling objects. Oh! Yes, we've just pushed loads of them. Um, actually, I want to set off things to nil. Make things. There we go. Now we're back in business. All right. Um, has anyone tried Keppel with macOS and Metal yet? Well, it won't be using Metal, but um, macOS still has OpenGL. Or it did two weeks ago. Um, it works on Linux, Mac, Windows, uh, with SBL and CCL tested. It also compiles in ECL but runs like shit. So, um... Vogans! Yes! Vogan shoot. Bread textures. Is that kind of weird? I don't really want to know what you're getting. Don't paste weird stuff in the chat. Please. At the moment, I haven't blocked um, links in the chat, but if people start being pricks, then I'll block it. <laughs> and that will be that. Right, so hopefully now our list of things is full of falling things. Great, because we're going to start dispatching based on type soon. We can. Da -da 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 -da. Let's do entities. To make our pizza, what are we going to have? Um, 
Well, we can have our stream. So let's do the stream is going to be a cylinder. We're going to have to make that function in a second. And we're also going to need a stream for the crust crust stream. That sounds problematic. Here's a sphere. I'll leave it the same size as the others for now. Um, that is not how you define a class. What am I doing? Um, yeah. My head is in weird places right now. Thing. Stream. There we go. Um, yeah, I suppose all we really need is the extra slot for the crust. So, crust stream. Any arg is crust stream. It's initially nil, sure, and the accessor is buff stream, sure, it's you know, crust stream. And that's that. That's a thing for pizza. Valid argument crust stream. Oh, yeah, because I don't know how to write Lisp, apparently. Do that, get rid of that. Oops. What have I done? Dev class, pizza, which is a thing. Oh yeah, we don't need that. Fool of a took. Okay. It's gonna be slow if I start writing that shitly. So, Kivan, make base, make pizza base. Let's have a variable for def var. Pizza base. Now I'll have to check on the chat to see how that's going. Ah. Set up pizza base. I need more or less coffee. Don't know what it is. Um. Yeah, I like that Chimera's uh, bot is here, but I haven't seen him. <laughs> okay. Open game art. Let's see what we get. Um. I'm going to have to do this on the other machine anyway. Because I don't have an easy way of... What the fucking hell was that? Right. Um, Twitch baggers. Now you get to see yourselves. Behave. And I get to see me, which I don't need to see. I see plenty of that, thank you. Right. Pop out. Here are you fine folks. Ah, oh, god damn it, of course. Um, Entropy Ad, could you just post that link again? Sorry. I just want to be able to see it on this machine. Thanks, man. Yep, that'll do. <laughs> Looks like sand, but that'll work. Right. Play with verts. Bread.jpg. Sure. This is how I spend my day. Right. Make a pizza base. Uh, and it's going to be make instance of pizza. And we are going to pass in some things. Uh, no. Make instance of pizza. There we go. There we go, now we can actually see the arguments. So the crust stream is going to be a sphere, and the um, stream itself is going to be a cylinder. And we're going to need a function for that, so let's go and look at what do we have for that. Assets, wasn't it? So we'll just copy the one for box, and we'll fuck with it a little. So we're going to need a radius and a height. That's fine. And so we'll do radius, radius and height as the key. And then we will, if it's already in the meshes, then we'll pull it out of the meshes. Otherwise, we are going to get a cylinder GB array uh, thing with a radius of radius and a height of height. That should do it. And how many segments does it have by default? 
30 segments. That'll be fine. We'll hide the edges with the spheres anyway, so that's okay. Um, and then we make a buffer stream using that data and the index, and that should be fine. And we've got to rename it. Cylinder. Right, and what's the size of our floor so far? We made it 40 by 40, so if we make the radius 40, oh, that'll be fine. So radius is 40, and the height is whatever we use the height for the floor, which is, yeah, whatever zero. This is gonna replace the floor really soon, so we'll, we'll do that. Um, the cylinder, we're gonna texture with some kind of tomato sauce. <laughs> Always 12 segments for the pizza. It's the law. Centipod pizzas. <laughs> what the fuck? I like you. You can stay. Right. Um, let's just steal the other things from here. The sampler for now. Um, oh, yeah. We're going to need a sampler for... So the sampler for now is going to be lava. We'll replace this with tomato sauce when someone finds a tomato sauce texture. Uh, we're also going to need a crust sampler. Sampler. I hate the syntax for classes in common list. Um, okay. So, do, 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 do. that should be fine. Yep. And crust stream and crust uh, sampler. Is the texture. Oh yeah, we can test that actually. What was the... What was it called? It was bread, wasn't it? Yeah, bread. Oh yeah, another thing to note is these functions um, look for the... Where is it? They look for the thing that you're trying to load relative to the system. So relative to our project, look for the file. So let's get texture, let's go to the REPL and load that. It loads, hooray. So that's in the cache now. Make pizza base. We've got our stream, we've got our sampler. Um, and now we're gonna, I suppose we can just call this. Let's try it. I'll make sure that this variable exists. I think we did that already. Make pizza base. Yeah, well now we've got a pizza. Hooray! And let's inspect that object and we'll see that it has various properties. That's cool. So now I want to get rid of the floor in our main file. Where's floor? Where's draw floor? Here we are. Draw the floor! Um, we are going to draw thing... Pizza base. See what happens. It works! Oh, it's huge though. Okay, we might have to make that a bit smaller. Um, that is a big pizza. Puns? <laughs> Stand for that. Right, um, what else is going on other than puns? Lava looks margarita sure already. Da da da. Berlin noise blister. We could do some Berlin noise. We've got all the functions for it already made, so that's cool. Um, maybe generate a tomato sauce texture. <laughs> we'll just make it red. That's fine. Um, or we'll just yeah, we'll we'll, we'll uh, tint the lava in the uh, in in the <laughs> in the fragment shader. That'll be fine. Right. So, um, what will we do? What will we do? Okay, so yes, I actually want to change the stream to be smaller. Let's do a let's do one by thirty. So let's get our pizza base, and then let's get the what is it called? The buff stream ah, of pizza base, and let's set that to be. Cylinder 30. Mm, yeah, that's, uh, let's try 25. And don't worry about that shiny uh, stripe that you're seeing there. This is the, that's the specular map from when we had, when we were doing these as 3D boxes and we were 
just learning about specular. We'll fix that later. That's an okay sized pizza. We can reposition our camera. Um, okay, so that's that. So now drawing the pizza is going to be a little different. So phone draw pizza is, let's go to play with verts. It's going to start off just this. Draw pizza, pizza base. Pizza. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Okay, now we're using this function. So we're going to draw this and then we're going to loop a bunch of times for i below. I don't know. 50 or 60. Apparently I wanted 60 there for a second. Do, and then we're going to draw a thing and it's going to be the cross stream. Oh yeah, so draw a thing, the... Ah. Cross stream of the pizza. So we're going to draw that 50 times, so we'll probably end up with... Oh no, it broke! Okay, there is no application applicable method for the generic function off stream when called with... Wait a second. Oh yeah, we're saying draw thing. Um, but this is going to have to be slightly different, actually. I'm just being an idiot. Okay, so we're going to take this. Be from draw crust bit. Science. Um, for pizza. And we are going to take the crust stream out of the pizza. We're going to draw that. We're going to scale it by whatever and do all those normal things. Might have to make the crust bit its own thing. Ah, it doesn't matter. We'll deal with that later. Um, yeah, maybe we can make a crust bit its own thing and then we can recycle some stuff. Which way do I want to do this? Yeah, okay. Bit of refactoring coming up. Okay, both of these can go away. Pizza is a... It has a crust bit. A crust bit, we'll just see how good lisp is for refactoring stuff. Hopefully, very. Um, that's a one of these. And then we're going to make a pizza. Defun. Oops, that's not defun, that's defloss. Make crust bit. Remove that in, that wasn't going to be there. Now we're going to make instance of... It's just going to be a thing. I don't think we need to give it its own... No, no, let's not be lazy. Crust bit. Make crust bit. And it's... This is going to have the... Um, going to have a stream and its own sampler so it doesn't need these it's going to have the sphere and the bread so that's fine then down here uh, the pizza is going to have its own stream and sampler and then it's going to have a crust bit which is a make crust bit okay maybe that'll work and then drawing the crust bit we'll just get to in a minute and it's going to draw a thing um, the crust bit of the pizza. Maybe. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, we are going to have to just remake the pizza object to see this. Uh, set F. Where do we make the pizza base? Oh yeah, it's just cool paint. Make pizza base. No class crust bit. Is there not? Pretty sure there is. There is now, anyway. There we go. Wah! Okay. That was worth it. So now, our crust bits are somewhere. Where are they, actually? Let's get our pizza. Let's get the crust bit from the pizza and have a look at it. It is... Oops. Uh, zero, zero, zero. Ah, so it'll just be below here. I think if we set the position of 
Let's get the position of the cross bit and then we set that to be zero two zero. We'll see it right there. There it is. Very shiny and textured, apparently like bread. Um, its scale is too small for the perimeter though. So let's get the scale. Let's look at it first and see what it is. The scale is one. So now we're going to set that. Wow. Set F this to be four. That's quite big. Two. Maybe. We well, can change that in a minute. Okay. Um, just so we don't have to type it again. Scale is two. And let's see what's going on in the chat. Um... <laughs> Pizza drone ordering in the background. <laughs> Careful Internet of Things. Not everything has to be Internet of Things. Maybe. Dang, it, making me hungry. This is some strange pizza to get hungry at. Um, Darius, is there glue code somewhere for drawing uh, class imp meshes and assets? No, not yet. Um, because it's quite a varied thing. Um, it's not something that would live in the Keppel project, but it's definitely... Um, it would definitely be useful. Like, that's a library it would be really cool to have around. It's something just to load in all the common stuff and, you know. But then when when you've got drawing, it's then, you, then you're defining most of an engine. It's like, hey, what kind of lighting model do you have? How are your textures set up? How are your objects set out? All this stuff gets too many decisions for me to make. So I just make cap and all the surrounding libraries. Um... Jesus, it's been an hour already. I have been going slow. Sorry about that, folks. Ah, I'm not sorry. It's okay. I'm having fun. Uh, <laughs> fluid dynamics would be cool to do. I would love to do that. Um... <laughs> the bread is so stupid. Um, spheroid marble pizza bread. Yeah, right. So we need to, when we draw these things, we need to... Actually, we can just set the positions. We don't need to... We just, when we, oh no, we need to set them for each. Okay, so we're going to set off the position of the crust bit of the pizza. Jesus. To be, um, well, it's going to be a, a two anyway. And then we're going to, how, how, <laughs> how are we going to do this? Oh, I can't be bothered to think in radians right now. Oh no. Um, ah. Let's just do, what is it? Um, sign of, uh, there's a, I think I've got a, yeah, I do. Oh, that saves thinking. So that's, uh, uh, two pi divided by 50. So let's do a few things. Step is 50. Um, Oh no, that'll be chunks. <laughs> bits! Of course it's bits. It's bits. And then so the step is 2 pi divided by 50. I think, if I'm not being an idiot, which is quite possible. Um, oh no, that'll be a float already. And then sign um, step times i. And then we should be able to do the same with cos. Wow, what did we break? Oh yeah, I just haven't wrapped that letter around. And what was this? Bits is defined but never used. What? Oh yeah, bits. And low bits. That is not, oh yeah, now I need to scale it. Um, let's do this and bring those down and then times and it's the size of the pizza base, which was 30. Oh no, it'd be radius, wouldn't it? Yeah, radius is 30. Oh, of course, that's why that was so big earlier. I was doing radius 30 rather than... I'm an idiot. Okay, so they're not merging together very well, but you know, that's the rough idea. There we go. <laughs> that looks so bad. It looks so bad. That's great, okay. Eat a marble pizza. Two pie and a pizza. It's pizza pie. 
Um, okay. That's, uh, Jesus. Right, so we have, <laughs> we have our pizza base. Um, we don't need this floor code anymore because that's all moot. And then we go to play with verts.lisp. And where is... I'm a bit confused about something actually. Where's our player? Oh, I know why. Um, oops, entities. The crust is not meant to be at this height. The position for the pizza is meant to be whatever it was for floor. Ah, damn it, I shouldn't have deleted that. One second. Paste. There we go. What was it? Zero minus one zero. Um, zero minus one zero. That's where that should have been. Let's go and update that. Pizza! The position of the pizza. Set off that to this. There he is! You can actually do with being a little lower. Um, 1.5. Sure, that's fine. Hacks upon hacks. Right, so now we've got our little dude moving around, and it's he's still moving down around in a square region within the pizza, though, so we're going to have to change that. So we need to take our input and start treating the... Um... <laughs> so it looks like a Pizza Hut's filled crust. Oh, there we go. Now we've got product placement in here. God damn it. Oh, actually, um, somebody was asking, oh, Pomdebet was asking about this. I haven't looked into um, setting up a Patreon yet, but I will, um, because you've asked. And um, yes, I'll do that. It looks legally that everything's fine to do that from Europe, so that's great. I will get that done. You know that feeling when you see food on TV and immediately want to go get it? It's the opposite. <laughs> Truth. Okay. What are we doing now that we've got this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to go and uh, work with the... Oh, let's start this. And player. Where's the stuff? Updating the player. Here's where we read the gamepad stuff. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to make this into a spherical coordinate thing. Um, How's the easiest way to clamp this to... Oh, I think this is going to be hacky. Um... <laughs> Do that and we will... GLEN is the length of... that and minimum of that or one okay oh this can't be v3 length of gpos so that's going to get the length of that vector and then clamp it to one and then we will um Redefine GPOS to be V3 normalize GPOS. Sorry, I'm not explaining much of what I'm doing at the moment. We'll get there. Then V3 times scalar. Scalar GLEN. And it's done nothing! Oh, yeah, because I haven't used it. Muppet. Right. Yeah, there we go. Now it's moving in a circle. That's cool. 
good. And we're doing it by 10 to get the full range of our pizza. We need to be doing 15, which is probably going to put us... Oh, no. That's not what I expected at all. Maybe that's 0 0.7 something, so... Oh, let's just fiddle with it until it's right. There we go. That's a good range. We'll need to spread the uh, items out a bit more, but... God, this is just dreadful looking. It's fantastic. All right, let's move out. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. Man, we're going to look back on this in some, some streams in the future when we've got meshes and an engine playing about and we will have a giggle at this. We've got to remove that specular because that is just dreadful. Um, let's... Um, Let's get the rendering file open and we will go and specular map. I think we're just... Where do we do the specular stuff now? Specular power. Oh yeah, here we are. We just add it here. So let's remove that for a second and... Then at least... <laughs> at least the bread's not shiny, you know? It's just dreadful. I, I could have used a torus, but I would have to write the function to generate toroids and that's boring as hell. Like... Primitive generating functions are so dull to write. Especially when they need to be quick as well. It's... Aren't those the falling things? Yeah, like, so... Hey, we got 14 viewers. Hey! More olives than that. Yeah, so... We... Are going to want to, um... Yeah, we need... We need things that we want to keep and things that we want to... We want to shoot. So you should get points for destroying the things that shouldn't be on your pizza so yeah like every good thing that hits your, hits your pizza your score goes up and you know uh oh gift master in chief as uh <laughs> agreed ah, i should really watch that show someday it's stupid that i haven't um It's quite not ugly. <laughs> it reminds me of the era of 3D Fresh and everyone made models out of geometric primitives. Yes! That's yesterday, right? Um, <laughs> Mark Maddo. Not to say I wouldn't eat it. Truth, man. I probably would as well. Um, looks like a portal to hell. Indeed. Right, so... We need to... There's a few things we need to do. We need to have... At minimum for this to be a game, we need two kinds of things. We need stuff that we want and stuff that we don't. So we need a texture for... Like, what What do we want to land on our pizza that we keep? And preferably it should be a different colour. Like, do we make little cubes and they're ham? And we let the ham land on the pizza and then shoot away... I don't know. Um... Uh, Pixel Outlaw. Uh, the lava um, texture is on the repo. So play with those. Um, there. That's where it is. So yeah, we're gonna need, we've got falling things. Where's falling thing? All right, we're gonna need two kinds of falling thing. <laughs> What's the good falling thing? Come on, people, make a decision. Shoot the toppings you don't want, exactly. So we need, we need at least two toppings. How about just catching the olives? Mm, could do, but we've already got the, uh, not pineapple. Is, so, is, is that shoot pineapple or keep pineapple? Ambiguity. I don't. I don't remember what I've just said very well. So I may. It may make perfect sense your answer. Pepperonis are easy enough to draw. Pepperonis. We're keeping pepperonis. Cool. Right. Pepperoni is a thing we're going to keep, and we're going to shoot away olives. That's that's it. 
that's what's happening. And the pepperonis are going to be... Um, we'll leave this function here. For now, actually we'll just copy it. Two of these. And make pepperoni. Make olive. I think that the pepperonis are going to have to be cylinders. And they're going to have to have a radius of... Well, these guys have a radius 1, so that's a good... Let's uh, 1.5 for that. And play with verts. Height is going to be very small. 0 0.1. There we go. And so we can start just by making a bunch of pepperonis. Where's loop? There we go. Collect. Set up things. <laughs> oh yeah, we randomly rotated them. That's not going to work. Because otherwise we're going to have to straighten them out when they hit and it's going to look really janky. So let's just... There we go, pepperoni's falling. And we're going to need a random um, point around a radius. So let's generate one of those. Um, let angle is random to pi. Yep. And it's single float. So that's good. And then we are going to... Position is going to be times sine of angle. Uh, position is going to be. Yeah, I suppose we'll start them at 40. Mm, this will have ramifications when we start testing it, but we'll get there. Um, ah. Cause angle. Oh, yeah, we've got to times it by something. Let's do... What was it, the other one? Like 18 or something. I don't know, we'll just, yeah, let's do it at 17. 17! Okay. Maybe this madness will work. So actually, uh, yeah, we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to set this back to what it was for a little while, because... Having them all come down at once in a big ring looks... Oh yeah, and the distance is gonna have to change as well, because at the moment they're all at the same distance around the pizza. It looks bloody and horrifying, but maybe it works. Oh, nice one. Thanks, dude. Right, let's, uh, let's have a look. What have we got? <laughs> yes, blood pizza. Fiery blood pizza. Satan would be delighted. Right, okay, so we replace lava with this. So we replace that. And now we can, um, oh, actually, let's, and yeah, let's rename it. Where is it? Uh, lava. God, this resolution is so small. Uh, south.png. And, oh, actually, let's REPL. Let's look for the pizza base. Let's look for the sampler of the pizza base. And we're going to set it to be six. Stop PNG. It's done. We're in. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and we can go and update the code where wherever it says lava is. Rep. Lava. There we are. Not we're going to need to make a new pizza base in a while, but it's in. Okay, so we so we have our pepperonis. Ah, yeah, but they're falling in the wrong place. So pepperoni, like when we it was actually quite good. If we if we put it at ten, and let's create them all again. Oops. See, they're all at the same distance. 
That's rubbish. So we are going to need a random distance as well. So dist is going to be um, random 17. And then we're going to times the distance. There we go. And that's not enough. So 25, 26, something like that. Here we are. Okay. 23. That's fine. So now, random. Doo -doo -doo. Oh no, we're going to set that up. Yeah, let's. Ah, oh, can't remember what I'm doing. Let's set it. Set it back to what it was for now. Okay, so of course we're going to want these to stick to the pizza when they, rather than just disappearing and falling back at the top, we're going to have to lower the number of. Uh, pepperoni pieces because they're the good thing we're going to need a score so let's get um it's 20 past nine so we can go an hour and 20 we'll stop at 10 for sanity reasons defa score is zero right okay um And now we've got a list of things, right, so I want two different lists. I want stuff that's falling and then stuff that's hit the pizza and stuck there. So we're going to change this to falling things and stuck things. We're going to take our original list of things. Set it to nil. We're going to compile these. We're going to set our falling things to be that. And we're going to go and change play reverts. Things. There we are. Falling. Oops. Falling things. The variable falling things with two asterisks is unbound. Yes. Wow. Right. Um. See what's going on. <laughs> It'll also be the um, the weird lighting in the scene as well, because it's like the ambient is kind of low, and the uh, it also might just be might just be rubbish. No, it's not it. Where's our ambient? 0 0.1. There we go. If we set it to 0 0.3, you can start boosting up the super bright pizza. No, that's. Leave it at 0.2. Actually, looks like a star shaker. Star. Oh, blah. Words. Uh, da 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 da. Falling things. Meet, meet, meet. Spec. Right. Um, and for all the stuck things, we're just going to draw them. And let's go back to entities again, and then we can change the logic, which is going to be really simple, which is... Where is it? Falling things, here we go. Update falling thing. When it's less than minus two, which appears to be where everything's stopping there, um, we don't set it do that. We remove the thing from falling things and we push the thing to stuck things. And then that takes precedence. So if we do this now. Oh, what? Whoa, what is going on? pulsing or something. Oh, they're all going down there. Um, that was weird, though. Didn't like that. Again, the way we're normalizing our time step is terrible, so we'll, we'll fix that in a minute. I guess they're down there. Um, let's 
set f the position, the uh, y position, to be um, zero at that point. Whoops. Um, that's probably the right thing to do. What is that? Oh, wait, what? Oh man, there's something funky going on here. Of course, remove is not destructive. So, um, set of falling things to be... There we go. Holy shit. I think I know why the frame rate's gone funky. Falling things, but what about stuck things? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> there's there's 41,000 things rendering, that's why. And they're all the draw call, which is nightmarish. Okay, stuck things to nil. So what happened was, let's get back to entities. The, the thing fell down. When it reached the point, it called remove, which isn't destructive. So it made a copy of falling things without the thing in it. And that was it. And then pushed itself onto um, the stuck things list. And then did that every frame, all of them. So we just had a, we had some kind of meaty memory leak. Um, so let's loop and, oh yeah, we're not pushing onto things now, pushing onto falling things. Oh, those are balls. That's not what we're meant to be doing, but they are staying, but they're doing that horrible jump thing. So we'll do, we'll fix that. Um, Oh yeah, because we just made a thing. Okay, so... Ah, set of falling things to make pepperoni. Oh, of course, now... <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Right, so let's uh, get rid of that horrible jankiness there. So, what we'll do is we will... Set F the... Oh yeah, we don't need to do that. It's set F for God's sake. Right. Set F the stuck things to be nil and then set F the falling things to be this. Okay, right. There we are. Now we've got things landing on our pizza. Pulsating pepperoni. There we are. <laughs> cool. And then if we check our falling things list, we'll see that it's now empty. Um, and if we check our stuck things list, we'll see that there's all the stuff. So now, um, what we kind of want is we need to reduce the number of pepperoni pieces. Whenever a pepperoni piece lands, we want to create another one somewhere up the top. So... When we make a piece of pepperoni, it will be at 40. So that's fine. Um, when something gets pushed onto the stuck list, it should call uh, make pepperoni and push that onto the falling things list. So it removes itself from the falling things list and adds a new one right at the top. <laughs> I wanted 41,000 pepperoni on mine. Yeah, try ordering that. That's the... That'll be great. Okay. Oh, I'm an idiot. That's that's fine. There we are. That would have been weird. Don't know how that would have worked. Okay, so now let's um, do this. And hopefully, oh yeah, they're all gonna oh they're all gonna fall and they're gonna set up all the other ones at once as well. God damn it! <laughs> right, so we'll set up the stuck things, nil, and um, let's have a. Okay. Let, uh, Let's, let's change this up. Um, random Y is going to be add optional. Random Y is going to be true. And if random Y, then we'll do whatever we had before. Oops. Ugh, that was dumb. Come on. You're in the history somewhere. There we are. If random y, then do this. Otherwise, just place it at 40. And that means when we create them from the... Uh, bloody hell, that's a lot of meat. 
and we create it from the uh, line here they'll be random and when they're created automatically uh, will they be random as well yes they will be won't they? we need random where's the make pepperoni good lord nil that's it then they'll always fall from the top okay and we need less pepperoni sadly we need like 10 pepper oh yeah that'll do okay so now we've got falling pepperoni which we want to keep so you mustn't shoot this stuff and now we need to make our olives two meaty level up <laughs> holy shit there's questions and stuff right oh god there you're gonna be a problem <laughs> There's so many puns, I'm not going to read them out. Um, see if this texture is better. Oh yeah, new textures. Cool. Sorry about that. Pixel Outlaws improved texture. Thanks, man. Let's do it. Uh, let's go see. Da -da 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 -da. See if this texture is better. Did that not open? Ah, here we go. <laughs> let's do this one. Um, play with it. Source. That was it. Replace. And um, we're going to have to... Hmm. One second. Thingy, thingy. One thing we don't do yet is allow... recreating the texture because right now it's got the same file name which means I can't reload it because I'm using the file name as the index into the hash table uh, so force is going to be nil uh, when force is true if um, yeah unless force uh, that and then we come down here and we can do... Oh, it's a little bit hacky, isn't it? Ah, oh well. Um... That's how I'll do it. When force... Um... Let S, which is going to be a sampler, be the get hash. And this. So if there's already one in there, then we need to free the texture, which is free. And then we get the sampler texture. S, that's it. Okay, that should be fine. And this should allow us to now to say text source dot PNG T. Oh, that did not work. Why didn't that work? <laughs> That's rather black. Hmm. Does it have an alpha layer, maybe? And are we doing blending? Nope, we're not doing blending. <laughs> Caviar pizza. Ugh. Um. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I didn't... Um, oh no, it, it would have uh, freed it and then it would have set hash. So... Oh, you're right. Yes, of course. It's using a free... Te wow, I'm surprised that worked. You're right. Ram hash was the answer. Thank you very much. <laughs> so yeah, thanks, Darius. Okay. Um... Let's try that. And. Oh, now. I've gone broke it. Samplers. Let's, let's look what's in there. There's source. Let's remove it. Now it's definitely not in there. That's not helped. Oh, of course. I'm a Muppet. Like. So. 
the texture that's in the assets thing is correct, but the uh, pizza base is the wrong one. Oh, I'm such a muppet. There we go. Set F to be that. There we go. What a fool. That's kind of annoying though. Like we, we really want that to go. We should make an asset system where it goes and uploads, updates all the objects that we're using it. That's quite a bit of meat on there while I haven't been looking. Bloody hell. Um, we need to minimize the amount of meat. Not because I don't like meat, but because it just, the risk factor has to be higher. So there's that. Okay, so we've got, um, oh, and while I'm thinking about it, let's play Vert's list. Um, Delta is so far Last time is um, get internal real time. Delta is um, get internal real time minus. The last time, sorry I'm mumbling there, I just working out what I'm doing. <sighs> Divided one by that, and then. Is that really that wrong? Quick test, what has Chris done stupid? Why is that different from what I had before? I was doing one over the FPS before. Oh yeah, so. That was getting me the time per frame. This is the time per frame. Whoa, no it's not. That's too much meat. That is too much meat. Right. Okay. Alright, I'm applying more coffee. It's just slow. Yeah, um... So, what we're getting there is the time difference in milliseconds for the frame. And then we want to divide one frame by, um, no, wait, oh, okay, it's, isn't it, so we're doing, what's our, it's, it depends what our target frame rate is, no, it depends, mm, fuck, you know what, for now I'm just going to leave, oh, I'm annoyed that my brain's decided to turn off on me there, we'll just uh, leave it how it was, because this is only updating once a second, but at least it's, um, this is updating. Okay, so our um, <laughs> meat carpet for the win. That's nasty. Um, looks like a meat pie. What's not to like? Yep. As <laughs> we call it, steak. <laughs> right, so. Let's carry on. We need things. That's still a lot of meat quite quickly. I suppose you need enough around, so it's, it's a challenge. Anyway. Um, every time, oops, every time that the thing gets added to the stuck list, we should also increment the score. So now if we check our REPL, we'll see that score is going up. Yay, we're not doing anything, we're winning. Um, and now we need to add the things we don't want which are pepperonis, and there's going to be more of them, or at least maybe the same. So update falling thing is going to have the same logic, so make olives right now is using the sphere, so we'll keep that how it is. Um, and we'll do, ah oh yeah, when, when we get here, we actually need to make something, so we're going to, we're going to have to pick, because update falling thing is used for pepperonis and olives, so Type case of the thing is if it's a pepperoni, then make a pepperoni, and if it's an olive, then it's make an olive. Um, and we're going to use the same logic for the position for this, and we also don't need. Come on, we can get a game done by the end of this. Um, all we need is two things and a score that goes up and down. Oh. A loose state and we've got a game or something like that. Uh, if random y. Oh yeah, we need those same options. I won't say it'll be a good game, but it will be a game. Right. And if it's an olive, we make an olive. 
Unknown type olive. What? Now, could it be that I missed olive? Or did I just never... Oh, yeah. Olives. Ugh. No. Olive. There we go. Try that. Oh, dear. What did I do? Where is that? Who's calling this with nil? How are they calling this with nil? Okay, one second. So in draw, something is calling update falling thing. Update falling thing. With a thing. And that means there is a nil in falling things. Hmm. That means I have just cocked up this um, type case. Oh yeah, what if it's neither of them? Why would it be neither of them? Then we've got an error. Let's put an E-type case here. Because uh, apparently I've screwed this up somehow. Let's have a look and inspect at our falling things array right now. Oh, there's a nil at the front. Well, that's annoying. Let's fix that. Oops. That's the stuck things, and this is... Oh, well, we'll just reset. <laughs> SLDB, tell it to continue. Falling thing fell through typecase. Oh, yeah! This is full of falling things. Go back to entities. That means... Yes, we're not actually making the right instance. I'm going to go and look at chat now, and someone's going to have already worked it out and told me and be saying like, why isn't he paying any attention? Right, one second. Here we go. Um, I was trying to tap complete vids, Nick. Anyone finding a good olive texture? Yes, that would be awesome. Um, nope. How does it map? I can give him something up maybe. I don't know. Let's just, just wing it. And none of this looks good. Like, none of this, except the tomato sauce. None of this looks good. So, um... Fine, cool. Free tiling textures, why not? We'll try those in a second. Started using e tape case over type case all the time these days from Steve Losh. Yeah, it is, um, I'm using it. I don't know why I didn't use it then. I use it everywhere else, but that works. Um, so the problem was that our, um, our falling things was full of instances of falling thing rather than olive or pepperoni. So let's try this again. And now that looks right. Now we've got pepperonis in there. And so now we should be able to carry on. Fuck, I love Lisp for this stuff. And it's gonna go really fast because I am... Um, really? Um, oh yeah, play this. Play this. Oh, have I been a Muppet? Yeah, I have. It's been going at 0.5 the entire time. Oh, bloody hell. That is the correct speed now. I had it a min before, which means that the minimum would always pick the... No, that is, that is correct. It will pick the smaller one out of those two. Oh, man, what is going wrong with my brain? Something really stupid. Oh, well. Let's just put this down to a, a, not a smaller number. So when things freak out, they freak out a little less. Anyway, so now we need olives. And so we're gonna append. We're gonna have to make a little function for this because it's just getting annoying to type. Make olive, let's see what breaks now. Well, hey. I mean, they've got the same texture, which is sucky, but we'll go and find that other texture in a minute. And um, we have falling things. That's good. And so now we need the logic to be um, slightly different from the scoring. Um, let's take this bit and put it down here. Um, 
if it's pepperoni, we'll push a new pepperoni to the falling things, and we'll increment the score. I think this has got an implicit problem, so that'll be fine. If it's an olive, then we'll make a new olive, add it to the falling things, and decrement the score by two. So olives hurt more than meat helps. So now if we look at our score, whoa, that's the wrong thing. Now if we look at our score, it's gonna start going, it's gonna start tending downwards, hopefully. Actually, when we do this, we should have more olives than uh, things. So you're gonna have to work harder because otherwise your score is gonna, let's set up the, uh, whoops score to be zero. It's minus seven, minus ten. It's dropping all the time! God damn it. Oh, I can't actually reach the ones on the outside. That's terrible. This is the worst game. No! It looks the worst, but it also plays the worst, and that's what's important. But it is starting to look like some kind of terrible pizza now, so um, that's a good start. Maybe we can make the objects a little bigger. We should also really have shadows down on the, uh, the floor. Oh, Pixel Outlaw's heading off, is he? Um, got to run a few minutes. Thanks so much for coming, dude. Great to see you. Um, okay. <laughs> this is the worst game. No. I don't know. Right, um, oh yeah, so what did we want to do? We want to update the player. Where was the player logic? Is that in here? Shouldn't be. Well, I suppose the player is an entity, yeah. The reach is 18, so I can get out to here, but I can't reach all the way to that. Well, this is good. Like, the meter is starting to form a perimeter, so we can see how far we can go. Let's do 20. Nope, that's still not enough. 23. There we are, right around the bread. Oh, there we are. That's perfect. It'll be easy to shoot all the surrounding ones then, hopefully. Let's, let's put it at 22. Let's see. Is that... Yeah, that's right under there. Meter perimeters for the win. Okay, now we need a lose state. So, um... Oh, what have I done? 22. So, we need... The first thing I'm going to do is do a, a reset that's just going to call that function that we've already used. So, um, what's our score now? Because this would be a good, a good metric. Minus 300, okay. So maybe we start you with 100 points, and if it hits zero, you lose, and then you get us high and we keep a total of the high score. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be it. That'll be good logic. Okay, so in here, we're going to have a reset function. Defund. Reset. I was thinking reset meat, but there's more than meat going on. Um, this is what we've had before, so that should be fine. We can now call reset, and it gets rid of all the meat. Um, it should also set the score to 100. Um, and we'll set this up here as well, so... I suppose what we should really do is just call reset on on initialize. Init reset. Cool. That won't matter till later. And then we have a game condition, which is um, down here. Yeah. Game state stuff. Why did I put a from that because I love them right so when um, when the score is less than equal to zero print you suck and reset again and when Hmm, no, we'll do something else. Elsewhere. 
So let's leave this open and we can see a, a you suck. Got to be coming up soon. 40, 39, 37. It's happening. It's happening. I think we're going to have to make the things slightly bigger. Um, assets. No, not assets. Entities. Where do we make... Not our cross bits. Olive. Right, we make our stream is a sphere with a radius one. Let's, uh, the olives are just a bit hard to hit right now. There they are, now they're a little bigger. Those are big ass olives, they're fucking meatballs. Maybe they should be one. It's just gonna be hard to hit. Right, and our pepperoni should be a little bigger to be a challenge. Oh yeah, we um, we got a you suck. Hey, it worked. All right, cool. We have a game. <laughs> Meteor perimeters for the win. Yes. Okay, so now we have a lose state as well. We should also get like points every time we shoot one. We should get five points. Um, for shooting one, we should also get some kind of update in the REPL of what our score is because I'm too lazy. I haven't got a decent way of doing text yet. Um. <laughs> Pawn a pimp. Can you please upload the game right now to Steam, the PlayStation Network or the Xbox Market? I need to play all night long. There, you, you don't though. <laughs> right, so, come on, what are we doing? Update the falling thing, right? Every time, um, okay, every time this drops, so here we're modifying the score. Then we can do when mod of the score with 10 equals zero. This means every, but this could go up and down. Yeah, every time we cross the threshold of 10, we're gonna print out what the score is. And this is gonna mean that we can fluctuate, fluctuate around a lot, but yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, format T score is now. Whatever the score is. Score is now 20. Score is now 20. Well, oh yeah, that's because meat is pushing it up and down. Over there, score is now 20. Oh dear, you suck and everything starts again. Brilliant, okay. And we do need a win state. No, we, we, we'll just keep a, um, a running total of uh, your highest score. So if we go back to Play with Vert, stop this. High score is, and we'll just do, where is it? Set F high score to be the max of high score and score. Oops. So now high score, it will definitely be 100. And it stays there. Um, And this is horribly hard to shoot. Ah! Come on, you fuckers! We're going to need sound effects as well. But I don't think we'll get those in this week. It shouldn't be too hard to add them. I cannot hit shit. I don't even know when I'm hitting them. That's a good point. Can I, hit the, can I shoot the meat? Does that work? Hey, at the moment it doesn't look like... I'm able to hit anything. And it not just me playing terribly, I think. This might actually be... Yeah, that looks like some of these bullets are flying straight through. Me thinks there is... Was there an olive hit? Man, am I so bad that I can't even hit it when I'm trying? Man, that should have been something. Right, I need to... Um, let's... Uh, because I'm hitting so infrequently, we can just print on every hit. This is why I, I don't play many games. <laughs> right, so... Oh, wait a second. I'm an idiot. Okay. Um, set the things, remove... Oh, yeah, okay, right. Um, we've got similar logic to... We've got to fix this logic down here. This is just wrong. So, when we hit an object, 
we've got to remove it from uh, remove the thing from falling things, and um, that's it actually. Set of falling things. We should use delete actually, but yeah. Set of this, and then increment the score um, by five. Print. Got one. Right now, this is currently going to give us points for shooting anything. Now I can actually hit something. There we go. But the radius is really bad at the moment because we're not taking into the size of the. Jesus, this needs shadows so bad. We might just add shadows real quick. Really janky shadows. Um, so yeah, we're getting points for both types. So let's do our type case again. Steal this. Do -do 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 -do. We always remove it, no matter what the type is. We... Die, olive scum! And... Um, Okay, so we should be due a reset any second now. Come on, where's my... Gotta be hitting that limit. Why don't I just type reset? Oh, there we go, doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're getting... You really need to get a new texture for these. But more importantly, oh fuck, did I hit the, oh, I shot some meat. Ah, fuck you though. Got you. Having to judge depth with the shots. <laughs> score is now 130, cool. So hopefully now our high score will be 134, brilliant. Sweet, so that's, that's a game. That's a game, it goes up, it never ends. Because it's like an 80s style game and 90s, well, no, let's say uh, 80s style graphics. Um, that is stuff, right, okay. That, that, that is a game! Push. It's online, now you can go and play this terrible game too. Let's, uh, we got. A few minutes left. Right, let's try and do shadows really quickly because we totally haven't got time to do that, but fuck it. Um, what should we do? Uh, come on, where's um, falling things? All falling things are going to have a uh, shadows dream um, and it's going to be a cylinder of radius. Two, because I can't think of anything better at the moment, and height of 0 0.1. Oh dear, what's that? Um, oh Christ, yeah, I bought that. Shadow stream, oh yeah. Init form. Do we don't need an init arc? No, that should be fine. Whoops. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm actually just typing this wrong here. There we go. Now hopefully all of our... Um, Falling things now have um, a. Why don't they have a shadow stream? Oh, balls! I just realised. Falling thing. All of these are the wrong type. You can tell how much we're depending on types at the moment. Um, reset. Score is now 100. Whatever. Cool. Right. Now, if we inspect the falling things, the olives and the pepperonis, they have a shadow stream. And then all we're going to do is um, we are going to hack something together real fast. We'll take this, uh, we'll put it here, we'll say draw shadow for thing, 
Um, it's going to be at. Oh, we're gonna have to. We're gonna need a slightly different model world position. We're just gonna hack everything here. Um, get shadow model world transform, and it's going to be the position. And we don't actually need the rotation. Stop thinking about that. Like, um, red loss is position of thing. Loss set f the y of position. Sorry if I'm ignoring you guys at the moment. I will be with you shortly. And get shadow model to world space. That's that, and this is going to be shadow stream of the thing. And why didn't it like that? Oh yeah, there's. Oh, I haven't. Fine. <laughs> um, and we're not going to pass in a texture. That's the trick I'm going to use. Is just not pass in a texture, which means it's going to be black, because oh, it's terrible. Anyway, um, oh actually no, it's going to end up with a last texture, isn't it? So we really need. I do need a shadow texture. Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, what shall I do? Okay. Um, let's play with us. We need a file. And... Oh, I don't want to open it with that. Really? Oh, God. Okay. Alright. Size. Big. There we go, a shadow texture. Oh fuck, what did I just do? <laughs> what the hell? I don't know GIMP. What have I done? This card changes. <laughs> what, the, what the hell happened there? Oh, and I'm doing it again. I've got to set this default. I am not used to Ubuntu anymore. Right. Overwrite green copy. Fine. Rename this to... Shadow. <laughs> really didn't need that. Um, the Apple text shadow.png. Okay, there it is. And, oh fuck it, we can just use it here. And then when we draw, um, I have to go down here. We need to move this somewhere else. Um, pepperoni, here we go. We are nearly done. Nearly done. So when we draw this, we just need to draw the shadow for it as well. Oh, maybe it's not here. Okay. Play with Earth, Liz. Draw the things, where are they? Draw the things, and draw the shadow for the thing. There's a terrible looking shadow. Why doesn't it? Oh, that's in stuck things. Don't want the stuck things to have shadows. Um... What? What was that? What did we just do? That was the weirdest. What? No! Right, one second. Yeah, you're, you're losing me right now. I, it's a good thing I wasn't reading the chat because it doesn't make any sense. Um, draw shadow. This should be this. Um, the shadow stream. The position was for that. The model to world was... Was that one? What was wrong with that? Everything went crazy for a second. I'm not sure why. Ah, oh, come on. It's the last thing to turn this into a game. Come on. For each thing we call draw shadow, we map over, we mapping the stream.
And oh, idiot. Um, no, no, maybe that wasn't it either. God damn it. Oh yeah, we're mutating here. That's why. Okay. So, um, he is So now the shadows are where the things are, so I can come here and shoot that. That's made it slightly easier. There's something coming down. So yeah, we can, uh, something coming down here as well. Ah, fuck you. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a good point. We can't win, ultimately. Because when we, when we kill things, it doesn't spawn a new one. So the only thing now that's falling is meat. So essentially I win forever. Cool. Right. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Would you like Z fighting on your pizza? We've got some of that. God, that is horrible. Oh, don't try to fix it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've said it, said it. It was setting the position of white to zero. I'm glad you saw it as well. Um... Any way to make the shadows darker as they fall? We could totally do that, but it's gone 10. And I, uh... I've got to let my partner move around the house and ha stop having to be really quiet for my stream. So, thank you so much. Is there any questions before I bugger off? Um, and if not, then we made a silly game <laughs> in a, in a, about an hour and a half. So I'm, I'm super glad with that. Push that thing. Good point, that man. Um... I will test after the stream to make sure it starts properly. Because I think it might, because we've been hacking around, you might have to start it and then tweak a few variables. But we'll we'll fix that. For example, the camera starting position is going to be gash. But meh. That'll be a five minute fix. <laughs> Thanks, folks. That was really cool. Yeah, next week we've um, we've done our stupid game idea now, so we're gonna have to come up with something else. So any ideas? Uh, throw them in the chat. Throw them in the comments on YouTube, or on Twitch, or on Reddit, or wherever you prefer to yell things at me. Um, and we'll do something else next week. Right? Cool. Thanks a lot, folks. I'm going to switch machines so I can turn off the stream. If there are no real questions coming in. Dessert? Good call. Right. Peace, folks. Bye.